I, I kind of figured people had enough of Whitney Houston for a while at least, you know, and, and you don't want to overkill, you know. So it was, a, it was time to take a break and, you know, just a break for a minute and then come back at it. I'm Your Baby Tonight is Whitney Houston's third album. My method is uh, just going in there and giving it the best that I've got, you know? Um, if, if I think about trying to top what I've done, you know, or trying to outbeat, you know, the second album with the third one, um, you kind of get confused on the focus of what you're trying to do. And um, what I'm trying to do is just make great music. What once was the greatest love of all has been tempered by the year. Now, there's a slightly different Whitney, still in concert with her music mentor, Clive Davis. Clive and myself um, kind of like uh, directed this album in a certain way. We said, okay, this is what's happening now from the time, the last album up until this present album. And a lot has gone on, meaning there's been this, uh, it's, it's like almost like the disco era to me, you know, it's like, going back a little ways when, you know, all you heard was grooves and, 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 and rhythms and beats, you know, and people were jamming and dancing and clubs were filled and, you know, and it's kind of like doing that again. Whitney is the kind of vocalist, she can do anything, you know, and that's, I, I think that's what we realized from the first session that we had with her. As soon as she started singing, we just said, nobody really knows how bad Whitney Houston really is. You know, the LA face took it to another degree, you know, it gave it the, the R&B, which people were crying for. And I was like, yeah, I'm ready to do that. You know, I love their work. I was sitting in the airport and waiting for L.A. and Face to come and pick me up. And <laughs> She was just sitting there, you know. I said, no, that's not her because there's no big bodyguard standing around. There's no, there's no hoopla. So it couldn't have been her, you know. L.A. passed right by me. And then he looked back and he goes, are you? I pointed back to him and I said, well, is it you? And we both said, yeah. <laughs> and then he sat down next to me. He said, well, how do you do this? I said, how do I do what? He said, how do you, like, you know, go around by yourself and just sit around and nobody bothers you? I said, because I don't bother anybody. So nobody bothers me. Whatever you want from me. It's picture. I'm very adamant about songs, you know. Um, I don't mind grooves, and I don't mind dancing, and I don't mind all that stuff, but to me, what matters and what stays in people's minds is the, is the word. I'm your baby tonight. That's a hook, you know, that whatever you want from me, it's a hook, you know, that people remember. Not only does it have a bad slamming groove, it's got a nice lyric. I have always, always dreamed of singing with Stevie Wonder. And Stevie wrote and produced a song on, on, on my album, and it's a duet. There's, there are really no words to describe Steve, except that he's just a musical genius and so much fun to work with and so down, you know. There's no ego tripping and none of that stuff, you know. We had such a good time, you know, and we got the work done like, that, you know. He knew what he was doing, I knew what I was doing, and when we got in there, we knew there was gonna be some singing going on. Um, my root is not black, my root is gospel. Um, my root is not R&B, my root is gospel music. That's where I come from, I, I, I come out of the church. Um, and gospel is not something that you can categorize. It's not black, it's not white, it is a feeling. It is soul, it comes from the soul. It, it's something that you can't deny. If I wanted to, I couldn't. Um, it is, it's a flavor, it's a taste. It's, it's something that you get when, if you're young and, and you're raised in church and you're raised singing gospel music, it is something that, it's like a, it's like a food that you like, that you just want to eat all the time. And I try to deliver that in everything that I do. To get into music business and to actually have mass appeal, for black artists, it's uncommon. You know what I mean? 
I didn't know what was going to happen to me. You know, I was, my mother and my family was in the business, so it kind of gave me a footstep in the door. But once I got in there, I had to prove myself, you know, and, and it was a lot more pressure on me because, it, well, she don't sound like Sissy or she don't sound like Dion, and she really ain't, you know, she ain't happening. Being black is, is not, it's not the color of your skin. Being black is where you come from, you know what I mean? Being black is a soul. It's, it's an attitude, you know what I mean? It's, um, it's, it's growing up with black people and understanding the black problem, understanding the black situation. Um, I come from that, you know. I, I was raised in the projects, you know. I, I've lived amongst my, my own people, and I understand their fears, and I understand their wants and their desires and their cries. So I don't think that it's about the color of your skin. I think it's about how you feel inside. The first time I ever went to see Whitney was uh, at Sweetwater's, which is a small club in New York. Uh, and she was doing two or three numbers in the act of her mother, Sissy Houston. And she was singing along with her brother as backup singer for Sissy Houston. But in the middle of the act, she did have an opportunity to do two songs. Actually, there were songs from Broadway shows. Uh, well, one was Tomorrow, and then she did The Greatest Love of All. The eruption of that debut album, it was a shock. I mean, the previous best-selling female black artist around the world were the likes of Diana Ross or Donna Summer who sold between three and five million copies around the world and her debut album it ended up selling about 18 19 million copies I call Clive the song man Clive is a song man Clive is the music man Clive has ears and Clive knows good songs he knows hit songs um, and you have to give it to the man because he does you know, when you make up an album, you can't worry about what the fans expect because if you give people only what they expect, it becomes formulaic, it becomes predictable. When Clive um, and I sit down and listen to material, um, we listen to it together. Um, things that, um, thank God, that we uh, agree on is things that we both like. Um, things that I don't feel that, you know, doesn't move me. He says, okay, fine, we won't do that. You know, it has to be something that I feel I can do, you know. I have to feel it in order to sing it, because if you don't feel it, then, you know, why even attempt to sing it? But I have felt the feeling of being in love, but I've also kind of, like, turned away from it at the same time, because I've known people who have been in love, and the way they react, I just ain't got there yet. It's like, oh, you about to lose your mind. <laughs> and I'm, you know, I haven't gotten to that stage yet. I think, um... I was about to, but I changed my mind because of certain situations. But um, I think I'm about to again, and I'm, I'm not sure that I, I should or that I shouldn't. I think love comes first, you know. Then when I get to know you and we've known each other for a while and, and things start to happen and we start to gel in and we're comfortable with each other, you know, and, and I know that you want me and, 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 and you know I want you and, and it's gotten to that degree. And, and it's definitely a commitment kind of thing. Then we can fall in love. Then I can act crazy. Then I can be like, oh, darling, love. Oh, yes. You, I live and breathe you. I drink you in the morning. I sleep you at night. I can't say that I've really quite been in love yet, but I'm working on it. <laughs> I'm working on it. People see me in a video, they see this, you know, this sex symbol. Sensuous, very, you know, like that's all I'm about, you know. And usually, like, when I'm, like, around the house, I'm, like, in jeans and my hair is all over my head, you know. And I'm walking around in my sneakers. And, you know, most people, that's why I can actually go out alone by myself and go to the mall and nobody knows who I am because I think they're looking for me to be in this flowing gown, you know, with this, my hair boofed and face beat, you know, and the whole thing. I think when people try so hard to try to sell records by sex, you sort of lose the focus. You sort of, you know, you sort of get into, mmm, this and then and that's and then, you know, and all the other stuff, you know, and, and the record goes someplace else. I think that there is a certain sensuality, you know, that, that uh, I think music deserves. I think, you know, according to what kind of song you're singing. But I don't, I don't try to use my sex appeal to try to sell my record. I think my record will sell itself. This is one lady who has not allowed herself to get tripped up by her ego. And when you're that low key, you cause quite a stir in the spotlight. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I'm 
watching the show. And, and you know I've been lying. Yeah, big time. <laughs> You've been lying, big time. But I don't know why you just don't tell them the truth. I mean, tell them I'm having your baby. Arsenio is a friend. Um, Arsenio uh, and I have a friendship where, yeah, we do love each other. I love Arsenio, and Arsenio loves me, and I have a lot of respect for Arsenio, and I know Arsenio has respect for me. Um, but we know Arsenio can lie real good. He lies real good. <laughs> but, you know, he knows that, and so do I. Um, I, don't, I don't know if the world really believes it or whether they know it or not, but we're just good friends, really. I mean, that's basically where it's at with us. Just friends? <laughs> but what about Whitney's reported love affair with Eddie Murphy? <laughs> Who? <laughs> Ed? <laughs> Is he a friend as well? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, he's, we're friends. We're very good friends. We're closer than most. Experimenting in love and in life. And on her third album, Musically. Vivi wrote a song on the album called I'm Knockin'. I decided to produce it on my own with um, Ricky Minor, who is also my musical director. Sing exactly what goes into producing, and I'm telling you something, it is more than a notion to be a producer. Well, you got to be in the air with the musicians, you, well, you've got to know that the, the tracks are sounding like they're supposed to sound, the drums are in the right place, and the, the guitar is doing what it's supposed to be doing, and the, the synthesizers, and the da -da -da -da. Just so much work goes into that. I mean, and I praise producers, I really do, because it is so hard. It is a difficult job, but one that is very challenging, and one that I hope to do again. I'm very serious about music, you know what I mean? I know, I'm, I'm serious about it. I am very, very serious about music and, and what comes over the radio and what it sounds like and what's being heard, what's being said. I'm very serious about stuff like that. It takes a lot of, for me, it took a lot of years. You know, it took a lot of years to learn my craft, to learn to get my chops, to learn how to relate to people in the audience, to learn how to stand on the stage and actually sing and belt out what is inside of here, you know? I, I don't choose songs whether because they're black or that they're white or that they're this or that. I try to choose songs that people can relate to emotionally, you know, at some point in time in their lives, you know, whether it be past or present or something they're looking forward to in the future. 